So in 2012, I, stayed, I co-founded Wilderness Trail Distillery with my business partner, Shane Baker. We're located in Danville, Kentucky, and we make Kentucky straight bourbon and rye whiskeys. We make about 215 barrels a day, which in uh, units that you might be able to understand a little better, that's 50,000 bottles a day. So hopefully uh, y'all are thirsty here in four or five years. <laughs> Somebody's got to supply the world with whiskey, okay? <laughs> so on the picture behind me, this encompasses everything I'm going to be talking about today. So we have a distillery here, so we're going to talk about how to make bourbon. Over off to the right, you see a building, the black building there to the right. That is a barrel warehouse, otherwise known as a rick house. This is where the bourbon barrels will age for over four years. And then up in the sky, you see some clouds. We're also going to be talking a lot today about climate and how climate is important for making quality whiskey and for that aging process. So let's talk a little bit about whiskey, and specifically bourbon. All bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. For example, bourbon whiskey must be made in the United States. Now they say if you want to sell it, it needs to be made in Kentucky. <laughs> Scotch whiskey, on the other hand, Scotch whiskey, by law, must be made in Scotland. Bourbon whiskeys must be made from a mash recipe consisting of not less than 51% corn. Scotch and Irish whiskeys, on the other hand, are made from malted grains. And another requirement, legal requirement, for making bourbon whiskey in the United States here is that it must be aged in a new charred oak barrel. Scotch and Irish whiskeys, on the other hand, can be put into used barrels. So some differences between bourbon and other types of whiskey. To make bourbon, again, we're going to start with a recipe with over 51% corn. We're going to add what's called a middle grain, and that most often is either wheat or rye, and then we're going to finish that off with a small amount of malted barley. Those grains are milled into a fine flour, and that flour is mixed with hot water, and that process is called the mashing process or the cook process, and this is where the starch in the grains is converted to fermentable sugars, that will be consumed in a process called fermentation. That's where we add the yeast. The yeast are gonna consume the sugars and produce the alcohol. The distiller's beer, which is the byproduct or the end result of fermentation, that is processed through a still. So this piece of equipment behind me here, the big copper, uh, that's a beer column. There we're gonna process that distiller's beer through and that's where we're gonna get the alcohol. You can see the clear alcohol coming off there. A lot of people ask us at the distillery, you know, how come it's not brown? It, it doesn't become brown until you put it into the barrel. So up through this point, you know, the mashing of the grains, fermentation, the distillation process, this is all very well controlled. So we have computers and different temperature gauges that guide us through this process. So up to this point, it's very much a controlled process. Next, that distillate is going to go into a new charred oak barrel, and this is where the magic happens. This is where you need the very specific climate for that aging process to occur. And specifically today, we're going to be focusing on temperature and humidity. <clears throat> Before we talk about what happens to that whiskey while it's in the barrel, let's take a step back and talk about how important climate is to producing a quality barrel. So starting with the white oak trees in the woods, obviously climate is important for growing quality oak trees. These trees are specifically selected for barrel production. They're cut, sent to a lumber mill, and they are processed into staves. Staves are the individual components of the barrel. The staves are palletized and stacked outside and are aged for sometimes over two years. The barrels that we use for our whiskey are air dried for 18 to 24 months. And during this air drying period, several things happen. One of those things is as the wood is exposed to the climate, you know, rainfall and the changing of the seasons, there are enzymatic processes that occur resulting in larger wood molecules being converted into smaller structures that are more easily extractable from the wood. 
Something else that happens is that you have volatilization of tannins, for example. This is called deacidification. And as you can imagine, just by me saying deacidification, it's taking things out of there that you wouldn't necessarily want to be tasting in the whiskey. <clears throat> Here is a, a cross-section showing fresh-cut wood, and then as it ages over time, the porosity of the wood increases. And this allows for easier flow of that whiskey into the barrel, again, extracting those wood chemicals out of the wood. The barrels are then charred. This is where we blast a flame through the middle of the barrel, and it creates that charcoal inside of the barrel, and that's what gives the whiskey its characteristic amber color. Now, once the barrels are filled with whiskey, they're moved to a specialized structure called a barrel warehouse or a barrel rickhouse. This is one of the rickhouses that we have on the campus at Wilderness Trail Distillery. This particular warehouse holds about 20,800 barrels. And just to give you an idea of how much whiskey we're producing currently, we fill one of these about once every 100 days. <clears throat> so at any given time, we have one that's almost full, one that we're finishing, getting ready to gain occupancy for, one that's about halfway built, and then we got the footer started for the next one. We just finished construction of our ninth barrel warehouse, and we estimate we'll build another 11 of these over the next three years. So as those barrels sit in the barrel warehouse and undergo the changing seasons from summer to winter time, the changing temperatures cause that whiskey in the barrel to expand and contract and that helps to extract chemicals from that barrel. So you can start to see the importance of climate on the uh, production and the quality of the bourbon. Now, in the barrel warehouse, there's some other things that are occurring that are also climate dependent, and these are chemical reactions that are occurring over time. Chemical reactions are dependent on temperature, so this is another way that climate affects the quality and the curing of that bourbon in the barrel. <clears throat> Something else that we see, and this is one of the reasons why Kentucky climate, <clears throat> specifically humidity, is important, is that we get a certain amount of evaporative loss that occurs year by year in that barrel. So if we didn't have that high humidity, we would be losing a significant portion of that whiskey in the barrel. Other drier states like Texas, New Mexico, we have uh, fellow distilleries in those states that may experience a 20% loss per year in that barrel. We see on average about a 2 to 3% loss per year. So another way that climate affects the quality and the end product of the bourbon. <clears throat> Here's a map of the, state of the, or the uh, United States, and the areas lit up in red are the states that have undergone the most significant change in temperature over the last century. You can see Kentuck E here. Um, and that kind of a little oasis there where we haven't experienced much of a temperature change over the last hundred years. So that's good for whiskey production. But with the changing climate in the states surrounding Kentucky, we are sure to see increased temperature changes over the years. And again, that's going to influence the rate at which those chemical reactions occur and other things relative to how that bourbon ages in the barrel. Now, I can tell you this firsthand, having grown up in Kentucky my entire life, you probably couldn't tell I'm from Kentucky by my strong <laughs> Brooklyn, New York accent. <clears throat> But what we've seen over at least my lifetime is, a, is an increase in severe weather events. And one of these things is prolonged periods of drought. So we talked about, you know, the staves aging outside before the barrels are made, the, the trees growing in the woods, the evaporative loss that can occur in those barrels over time. So these are some things that could affect bourbon production going forward could affect price if we have more evaporative loss. Um, if those chemical reactions are affected, we might see a difference in the flavor of the bourbon. So the next time you're sitting around sipping on your favorite bourbon whiskey, not scotch, bourbon please, 
hopefully you'll think about the importance of climate to the quality of the whiskey and how climate change might affect the quality and the price of whiskey going forward. Thank you.